No family is immune to the risk of suicide. I kept thinking, what is wrong with me? I have this great life. I was just, if I wasn't around, life would be easier on everyone. Multiple factors contribute to suicide, requiring multiple solutions. It has to change the culture. It can't be just one thing you're doing. But we do know this. The first step towards recovery is simple. We need to talk about this. And we don't need to be embarrassed or shy of using difficult words. Somehow get that help you need. It actually really pays off. Join us as we help you find hope in your darkest hour. Hi, I'm Dave McCann. Over the next half hour, we're going to have a frank and honest conversation about suicide because we all have a role to play in prevention. And if you're struggling right now, our hope is that you'll reach out and ask for some help. I recently sat down with Elder Ronald A. Rasbin of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, who's also a member of the Governor's Suicide Prevention Task Force. He told me when it comes to talking about suicide, we all need to be more bold. And I learned men especially need to be more willing to talk about their mental health. When I got on the governor's task force, a lot of things surprised me, yeah. to be honest with you. And I have to say that one of the great blessings for me was being brought up to speed on the seriousness of this issue. Yeah. So much so that I chose to speak on this topic to the whole church, at least all the yourself, teachers and leaders of the church. And a few people said to me after, well, that was bold, Elder Rasband. That was bold to bring that up. And, and yet, that's one of the things I've learned in this task force. We need to talk about this. And we don't need to be embarrassed or shy of using difficult words. If I was interviewing you, Dave, I would say, have you ever had thoughts about suicide? That'll get a 45-year-old man thinking. Let's talk about men. Yeah. Number one, middle age up for suicide rate in this country, Utah and in this country. Why don't we like to talk about our feelings? What Can I use a hard about? word with you? Absolutely. Pride. Yeah. I think the age group that you're describing is a little prideful. And I am not hesitant to say I've been in that category myself. Yet when you're dealing with these life-threatening conditions, some are our need to be treated medically, we have to be willing to talk about them. We've grown up in the man up, tough it out, yes. put your shoulder to the wheel, quit complaining. Yes. Uh, and so we do not do that stuff. Is that a condition, a stigma that has to change? I'm not here to say it's going to be easy. It's going to be a challenge, but we've got to do it. Lives are at stake. We have to change the environment so that spouses can talk with their spouses, so that priesthood leaders can talk with their members of their congregations, so that all of us can talk with specialists. That's another thing I learned on this governor's task force is how much support there is in the community, in the state, and nationally. Helplines professional psychologists, people that are just waiting by their phones right now. After I gave the message to the CES teachers, our social media teams put little segments of my talk up on all of the different social media platforms. I read every one of their comments. And where there were some who needed immediate help, I called upon our church specialists to immediately engage with those people. But if there's one person who any one of us can help save their life, literally, we're talking about saving lives, I take great joy in that, that a, that a soul has been saved for the Lord. The opposite, opposite of, of a desperate situation, the opposite of despair is, is hope. Yes. Right? Yes. And selling hope to those in despair seems to be that it's the goal of this task force and, and the goal of your remarks. And it's the ultimate goal of a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ. Faith, hope, and charity. We want to build faith, we want to give hope, and we want to do it in love. And just the simple formula of faith, hope, and charity is a good example given by the Lord in multiple scriptures that would give peace 
and comfort to those who are struggling. Elder Rasband of the Quorum of the Twelve. In an ongoing effort to help prevent suicide, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has released a series of videos, several of which come from Elder Dale G. Renlin of the Quorum of the Twelve and offer hope. We know from all the statistics out there that someone in the ward is hurting. Someone is having suicidal thoughts in your ward. And as we come together as families, as churches, in a community, we can do better than we're doing now. This is the way that we decrease any kind of embarrassment, reduce any kind of stigma, and gain further understanding about the process. There's an old sectarian notion that suicide is a sin and that someone who commits suicide is banished to hell forever. That is totally false. Suicide is the leading cause of death for Utah youth. Most parents worry about their child's mental health, but it's often difficult to recognize the signs of suicide or know how to get help. We asked a teen and her mother to share how they both found help and healing after her suicide attempt. I just noticed that I, I didn't really want to be around anyone as much as I wanted to be. All of a sudden she doesn't have that same enthusiasm to go to school and I think grades slipped a little bit. You see friends not coming around or her not going out with friends. Um, but then, and then we had some nights where there was just real sadness. She just would cry, you know, that she was just really, really sad. And you don't know as a parent, I mean, she's my only child and I think, is, is this just normal? Is it hormones? You know, and so, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I was still really unaware of what was really going on. So I probably didn't put as much into it as I should have, but they were just kind of first signs and, um, and then they just became more frequent. It's hard to accept that you have a have mental health problem, but once you do and you accept the help like from your family, if they're willing to give it to you and you can actually somehow get that help you need, it actually really pays off. You're going to eat this, right? You were always there to help me and you always wanted to be. When you're in that state, you don't think that anyone can help you, but they actually really can. They really can help you. My mom has helped me once I let her help me. Just talking to her, even though sometimes it makes you sad, it's, it's going to be worth it in the end to be open with your parents. I think for both of us, um, we both have learned that by kind of opening up about it and talking to people about it, it, it actually helps in both of our healing. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I now have friends I can reach out to and I can talk to if I'm having a bad day. Because, you know, I had days where it was really, really tough for me. Um, I tried to always be really strong for Sarah, but I had rough days and it was, it was good to open up. My advice is to, I think, be honest about it and don't put labels on yourself like, oh, I'm depressed or bipolar, just that you're unique and you're going to have problems and everyone has mental health problems at some point in their life, like most people at least. So I think it's important not to be too hard on yourself too and not label yourself. Yeah, and I have hope now, <laughs> finally. <laughs>
So the problem is that we're not authentic. We're putting up this facade. We can't be who we really are. And that's very unhealthy for, um, for a mental condition, for a mental state. Well, I know what it feels like to be so dark and so alone and feel so empty because of depression that you don't want to go on. It happened to me where you cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. You cannot see anything beyond this very deep, dark place that you're sitting in right now. The biggest motivator for me to write my book about depression was my children. I think it's a mistake and potentially damaging to hide mental illness diagnoses from your children. Because what does that say to them? That says you're ashamed, that there's some secret we can't talk about. And what are they going to do when they need help, if they need help? How are they going to get the help they need? And when does the cycle of shame and stigma ever end? So we have to be open about these things with our kids, I think. I think Elder Holland's talk on depression was a watershed moment for many people, including me. But today I'm speaking of something more serious, of an affliction so severe that it significantly restricts a person's ability to function fully. Someone has spoken about their own vulnerability and their own experience with depression. And I'm telling you, I have talked to so many people who've said that was a watershed moment for them. It freed them to feel okay about their own circumstance and their own mental illness. Though we may feel we are like a broken vessel, as the psalmist says, we must remember that vessel is in the hands of the divine potter. Broken minds can be healed just the way broken bones and broken hearts are healed. I think it's so easy to hide these feelings of not feeling good enough, not feeling like you want to go on. It's easy to hide suicidal thoughts. The more open we are about it, the more we're willing to cut the taboo, to cut the stigma, to say, are you struggling? Are you having thoughts of taking your own life? Are you depressed? These are conversations that will open the door toward hope and healing. Somebody around you is struggling, probably more than one person, and the more we can share and reach out and help these people, the better it will be. That was Jane Clayson Johnson. Like she said, there's a good chance you know someone who's struggling. According to the Utah Coalition for Suicide Prevention, one in 15 adults in Utah have serious thoughts of suicide. There's an especially high risk of suicide among veterans in our community. One Utah veteran continues his own healing by helping other vets. A lone veteran with a gun and flag in hand. A memorial to know that they're not forgotten. Stands as a tribute to the thousands of men and women who died fighting a battle far away from the front lines. You know, remember those that I've lost during the, the time being here at home. The bronze sculpture titled Proud in Tooele's Veterans Memorial Park is the first in the country dedicated to veterans who died by suicide back at home. For the longest time it was losing uh, 22 veterans a day to suicide. Retired Army Sergeant Josh Hansen almost became one of those statistics. I was just, if I wasn't around, life would be easier on everyone. Josh joined the Army after the September 11th terrorist attacks and returned with serious physical and emotional injuries, including post-traumatic stress. I went down that dark hole when they were leaving the house. Um, you know, my thoughts were to die by suicide. That's after he lost six men in battle and four others to suicide here at home. That was my wake up call and my turning point that I needed to get help. All right, Ed, show us what you got. He started at the VA and found healing through treatment That's and exercise one. and decided to share hope, founding Continue Mission in 2014. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. My recovery happened due to the fact that I got out of the house and got moved. There you go. <laughs> Today, that's pickleball with other veterans. The real importance of finding continued mission was getting myself out into the public and getting myself out to where I could do things so I wasn't isolating. And we need to take care of one another and support each other through this stuff. Josh's greatest support comes from his wife, Melissa. I'd never heard of post-traumatic stress before, so I did a lot of therapy myself up at the VA. 
She also helps operate Continue Mission. We strongly recommend that the support members and loved ones of our veterans come join them at our different events. At our events, they can socialize and talk to other support members that have gone through the same challenges with their veterans. Continue Mission has helped hundreds of individuals and families heal. And for many, including Josh, that healing is an ongoing battle to keep depression at bay. But he can't imagine missing out on his life. To think I wouldn't be able to hold my grandbaby, you know, I just can't imagine that. So please hold on to life and things will get better. I know people say that all the time, but things will get better and the future can be bright. Continue Mission served more than 2,000 veterans last year and families are welcome at most events and encouraged to join in. To find out about the next event, go online at continuemission.org. Helping people to understand, helping people, um, members of the LGBTQ community, to know that they are loved. Messages of love, support, and acceptance at the grand opening of the John Williams and Circle House in Salt Lake City earlier this year. Because the people that are starting to feel the full, the full measure of what Encircle has done and what it can do to heal families and keep families together. Stephanie Larson founded Encircle to bridge understanding between LGBTQ youth and their communities. Children want to be loved just as they are, and oftentimes they feel, my parents love me in spite of this, and they do their best to love me, but it's not complete. And so we're trying to bridge that gap so that they are, feel loved just for who they are. And Circle House has certainly become an excellent resource for LGBTQ youth at risk for suicide. One of the biggest challenges these youth face in a conservative community is feeling like there is no place for them. Arturo Fuentes stands before a crowd at Q-Talks, proud of the man he's become and the young boy he was. Rather than hating him like I'd done my whole life, I loved him and I liked him. Raised in a family that belongs to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Fuentes hid his sexuality and experienced serious thoughts of suicide as a youth. He says years in conversion therapy contributed to his depression. All that therapy, what if somebody would have asked me something like, hey, how are you doing? Do you have friends? How's your depression? Let's talk about your self-worth. And that didn't happen. At least for me, 90% of my sadness growing up came from this. And it wasn't something I could ever talk about. Well, for suicidality in general, the number one um, Number one factor that increases ideation, that makes people think about it, whether they're LGBT or they're older or they're veterans, is a sense of not belonging. Lisa Hansen is the clinical director at Encircle House. I find that most families, when a child comes out, access their love for that child and they will talk easily about their love for that child. But the child recognizes that they have become lesser in the parent's eyes. Her advice to parents, instead of dictating how your child should feel, listen to what they want. By listening to something that may be different from what you anticipate will be best for your child, you can affect, you can impact your child's positive mental health. We go in and we see these youth and these kids, and it's always about what they lack. Oh, they'll never be able to marry in the temple. They'll never be able to be happy. They won't be able to have a husband. And that's not dignifying to anyone. As a member of the Social Enterprise Alliance, Arturo is working on creating more opportunity for LGBTQ youth. What would have been really helpful for me, even now, is somehow being more exposed to successful people in the LGBTQ plus community that have had beautiful lives. And I think also Portrayals of LGBT people in the media have gotten better over the last 10 years. There's more a sense that they can be a main player rather than a sidekick. What has not gotten better is the sense in uh, many, as I call it, many pockets of society that it is preferable not to be gay. No matter their age, children want their parents' unconditional love. They want to know they are accepted. When Arturo finally told his parents he was gay at the age of 28, he received a message from his father. He hopes every child will hear. I just want you to know you will always 
be welcome in my house. You have already earned my respect, confidence, and admiration. You are my dear son. Love your father. Love people where they're at. That's certainly an important message for all of us. Developing a safety plan, which is, uh, and you can even do it on your phone. There are apps you can download for your safety plan. Of, you know, what would you use to distract you if you were feeling bad? Who would you call if you were really in trouble? Uh, well, here's the crisis hotline. You can push a button uh, and get that if you need it. Um, th those have been shown to be effective and at least reduced uh, further crisis, reduced the number of crises in the future. Welcome back. State agencies, hospitals, nonprofits, and the private sector have all united to raise awareness and create more resources for suicide prevention. The Utah legislature passed several life-saving measures. This session I submit is exponential compared to last session in terms of how much more these bills uh, are going to be able to do. The new legislation will provide funding to increase mental health providers in local schools, reinstate the free cable style gun lock program, and increase firearm safety education, give primary care providers access to telehealth psychiatric consultation, and allow medical billing for in-school mental health services. Being a teenager is hard enough, and if we can provide extra help to kids who need it, I think we'll be able to cut down on the youth suicide rate. If there's one thing we hope you'll do after watching this broadcast, it's open up the dialogue about suicide with your own family. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions, and please don't be afraid to share your struggles. We've provided a list of tools and additional videos on ksltv.com. I'm Dave McCann. Thank you for joining us. To watch this program and many other inspiring KSL documentaries, download the free KSL TV app now from your preferred app store for all your favorite devices. Enjoy uplifting programming anytime, anywhere you want.